Welcome to Educator.com. Today we're going to be graphing inequalities with two variables. First, we're going to discuss what to expect, what the graph of an inequality with two variables looks like. And the graph of an inequality in two variables is a set of points that form a half plane. The boundary of this half plane is a line determined by the equation corresponding to the given inequality. So let's break this down. If you are given an inequality, you can find the corresponding equation. And when you have that equation, you can use it to graph a line. So let's say my line comes out looking like this. One note that we'll discuss further in a moment is that this line may not be solid. It may actually be a dashed line. And I'll explain that in a moment. When you put a line on a coordinate plane like this, it divides the coordinate plane into two half planes right here and continuing on would be the upper half plane below the line is the lower half plane one of these half planes will contain the set of points that is going to be the solution for my inequality in two variables. Therefore, in order to graph an inequality in two variables, you're going to need to find this line, and you're also going to need to figure out which half plane contains the correct set of points. Right now, though, I'm just talking about, in general, this is what the graph is going to look like. And it's, you're going to either take this area in black or the one in red, one of the half planes. Therefore, the technique is going to be to first graph the equation corresponding to the inequality. One thing you're going to note, as I mentioned, is that if the inequality is either less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, if it contains this equal to, the graph of the equation is a solid line. If the inequality is less than or greater than, a strict inequality, the graph is a dashed line. For example, working with just a very simple inequality, if I have the inequality y is less than x plus 1, my first step, step 1, is to graph the corresponding equation. That corresponding equation is y equals x plus 1. And this is conveniently in slope-intercept form. Since this is slope-intercept form, I know that my y-intercept is 1 and the slope is also 1. That allows me to graph this line. Before I graph it, I need to know what the line is going to look like. It is actually going to be a dashed line. So since I have a strict inequality, I'm going to use dashes to represent the line. My y-intercept is right here at y equals 1, x equals 0, and then I know the slope. I know that when, x, when y increases by 1, x increases by 1, because I have a slope of 1. And I continue on, so then when x is that's going to be x is 2, y is 2. And then I'm going to go on increasing x by 1 and y by 1. So I add y is 1, go up by 1. That's going to give me the point 2, 1, 2. And then increase again, each of these by 1, and on up. And I could also do that going back down. This will allow me to form a line, but because it's a strict inequality, I'm going to use a dashed line. What this dashed line is telling me is that the points on the line are not part of the solution set. If I had a solid line, for example, if I had y is less than or equal to 2x plus 3, then when I found my corresponding equation, I would graph it using a solid line. Here, 
For my second step, I determined that I needed to use a dashed line. So my technique for graphing is I graph the equation corresponding to the inequality, and I determine that it needs to be a dashed line. In my second step, I need to figure out which half plane contains coordinates that will satisfy the inequality. That is done by choosing a test point. For example, I could again use the one we just discussed, y equals x plus 1. And we've already graphed out that line, so let's just continue it right here with this dashed line. The, that was the equation for the line, and the inequality was that y is less than x plus 1. So that gives me the line. Here's my inequality. What a test point is going to do is it's going to allow me to figure out, do I want the upper half plane or the lower half plane? And the easiest test point to pick is 0, 0, the origin. Therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my inequality and I'm going to let x equals 0 and y equals 0. And I'm going to determine if that is true, if it satisfies the inequality. So I have y is less than x plus 1. I'm going to insert 0 is less than 0 plus 1. 0 is less than 1. So I look at that. Is that true? Yes, it is. So does 0, 0, does this point satisfy the inequality? Yes. That point, 0, 0, the origin is right here. What that means is that this, the origin, satisfies the inequality and that this lower half plane is the solution, is the graph of the solution set. Okay, so again, if I have an inequality, y is less than x plus 1, I graph my line, y equals x plus 1, which we already did. I used a dashed line because it's a strict inequality. Then I chose a point, and I decided to choose the origin to keep my life very simple, and inserted those values into the inequality. So 0 is less than 0 plus 1. 0 is less than 1. That is a true statement that satisfies the inequality. Therefore, the half plane that that test point is in is the correct half plane.